Dale in Washington, Pennsylvania. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I'm going to cut the Essilor Ideal Advanced Digital Freeform Progressive Lens with Transitions Extra Active Brown and Crizal Sapphire for your Persol frame that you have mailed to me. It is, what is it? It is POF, which stands for Patient's Own Frame, Persol 3059, the 50i size in the color 24, which is the tortoise. You have to say it a little funny with me, tortoise. There you go. Um, of course, it comes with a little plastic sleeve that you sent to me after it was shipped to you from Italy, because all Persols are made in Italy. Really nice frame. I love that little hinge on there, that silver accent piece. And because... Now, Dale knew his pupillary distance, but he did not know. That's the distance between your eyes. I do not know the height of where the invisible bifocal should begin. So we in the industry use a pen when we're sitting across from someone. And this is a high-tech measurement you have to take. We went to, did I mention that we went to school for years to learn how to do this? So we take a marker and we put a dot directly in front of your pupil. And so I had him do that as well. I measured where the height will be. I dropped it one millimeter because actually I like it at the bottom of the pupil, but I don't tell anyone that. <laughs> but now they've seen the video, they're going to start dotting it at the bottom of their pupil, which is hard to see, especially when you need glasses like him for seeing up close and you're trying to do that. So I always tell people do it in the center. That's what he did. I'm going to pop out. I have measured. I have ordered your... Oh, that's really cool. I never noticed the Persol has these three little lines in there. And it almost acts like a hinge. So when you're taking them off with one hand, it flexes right there. I shouldn't be surprised. Persol is literally one of the oldest frame companies in the world. And they know what they're doing. Great styling on this frame. This is known as a keyhole bridge where it looks like you could put a skeleton key in there on the old doors. And here's something else. I'm going to let you through the looking glass. Should you ever need lenses for this frame again a couple years from now, you had to mail it to me a first time, but in a few years you can email me your new prescription. I am barcoding this into the computer so I will have the shape programmed into the database. You are now Secret Agent 448. You were also the 448th installment of my 250 million series of making a pair of glasses for everyone, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to scan this into the computer number 448 I've been doing this all along I've just never shown anyone this usually this is not the final paperwork I do not put your address phone number email and all this stuff on there so I make up a second card and yes I do recycle these I grind them up and put them in my garden but I usually put this sticker on your permanent card so that when you call or email me I'll have a reference to it so let's go ahead and put your frame into the tracing element of my blocker and hit start. Throwing out a little tidbit for people who watch all my videos, you've never seen that before. But the little stylus, just like before, is going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy any genuine frame for me and I'll install one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you'll get reimbursed for this purchase, whether they're a prescription or not. Now, I do not include free and visible bifocals, so whether you buy the frame for me or you send me your frame, it is the same price. So that's another nice feature. I don't charge you any more for the invisible bifocal to use your own frame. So... Let's see, your pupillary distance is 68. The computer starts at 32.5. I'm going to tap this plus button a few times till we get to 34. We're going to move the optical center up, the, the seg height, the segment height. I'm into the brevity thing, so we call it the seg height. We're going to put it 24. The geometric center of your frame is 19, so we're going to tap that box. I'm going to hit the plus button a few times until we go up to 24. Now, this is a single vision layout. If I was to, if this were single vision lenses, that's the graph I would use. But because this is invisible bifocal, I'm going to tap this button and it gives me a list. I can do a progressive, I can do a line style bifocal, and it gives me a different graph every time. And, but we're going to put it on the progressive. 
and we're going to take your lens now. Your lens comes with yellow paint all over the front of it and I have to use a lot of this stuff to remove the yellow paint. It tells me how it's oriented but when I get this I take it over here to this green light. I take this pen and I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a little circle around that black dot and an engraving which tells me which brand of progressive you're wearing. The material it's made out, the P is for polycarbonate, it has another dot on the other side and below that is a number which says 1-5 that is underlined. No, you can see all that stuff now. But 1-5 is short for 150. I take that, I have my Verilux layout chart. I put those two dots on it which correspond to these two dots. I turn it over and that tells me where to place the seg height which is going to sit directly in front of your pupil. The circle is the reading portion of your lens because your eye comes down and inward to read. Then I clean all that yellow paint off. The reason why I do it ahead of time is that I'm always afraid of any harsh chemicals affecting the finish of your frame. So I always do that ahead of time. So that's what you've missed so far. Now let's see, where are we at? Oh, gotta get the block. This is a block, or as I like to call them, Jenny from the block. And someone asked me yesterday, why do I call it that? I don't know. My wife watches these J-Lo movies, or maybe it's in a song, but she just refers to herself as Jenny from the block. So that's what I started saying. So I need a double-sided adhesive sticker. I've got some already prepared, but I'm going to get you two fresh ones off of here. Let me slide that back out. And every time I get a pair with anti-glare the lab sends me these stickers they're supposed to go onto the back of each lens and that holds it in place in the chuck so it doesn't slip but with the older older edges that are out there that's more critical these newer ones actually know the strength to compress at so that it doesn't um, it is a smart technology so the old dumb edgers people use and still have because this industrial equipment lasts for 20 years I like the new ones because you can barcode stuff and have it programmed into memory and that's what you get with the new $40,000 edgers. So I put the double sided adhesive, st ah, adhesive sticker onto the block. I'm going to pull the paper away to make the black side sticky again. On the back is a silver button that is a magnet that's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. I'm going to hold that there. We can put that there. That's not needed. Now these dots on a progressive lens, this is known as a four drop, the center of the lens. I'm giving you all this extra information. This is on the 180 meridian. It's a straight line from this dot to that dot. Your eye is just four millimeters above, so this is known as a four drop. And so with that information, that's going to go up here, and then these other two dots are going to be four millimeters below on this line. Is that too much? Do you guys not care about that? Or are you going to learn it anyway? So, 34, 24, 34, 24, that dot's where it's supposed to be. Those other two dots tells me that it's oriented and they're just right. I'm going to hit, oh, hang on, hang on. Who's emailing me? Did you guys hear that? I'm going to hit that button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the left lens. Actually, I've been getting a lot of messages on Facebook Messenger lately. Um, I don't know what's going on on Facebook, but I guess the younger generation, no one's emailing me anymore. They're contacting me on Facebook. New learning experience for me. So again, same pupillary distance. Half of 68 is 34. So that that measurement has mirrored. It's flipped over from the right side to the left. Same optical center height. And because where that dot's going to go, it's very close to that line. I'm going to move this platform, which is this, which is this platform, but it allows me to repositioned itself so I can see at any portion on the lens. That dot is where it's supposed to be. Those other two dots are lined up four millimeters below on this other line, that graph. I am going to hit this button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what costs forty thousand dollars. It weighs two hundred pounds. I recommend everyone go out buy their own. Then you can cut your own lenses at home and you won't need this guy anymore to have to skip breakfast and cut the lenses for you. So the actual cutting wheel, actually the light's on in there, I don't need the flashlight just yet. The actual cutting wheel is, this wheel is going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper. This is a diamond tipped cutting wheel. It's going to grind your lens down until it's the final size. This wheel in the center is going to put the bevel onto the lens, the V-shaped bevel, so it stays inside the bevel of the frame.
So now the magnet is going to do itself its job a second time. It's going to attach itself to something, another magnet there in the Chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Let's wake up the computer. And here's something new that you can check out. That number 448 that I have on your card, it is secretly numbered right there. So it tells me that's it, it knows what it's doing. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high-index plastic, or Trivex, would select that. Now you guys are going to go back and look at my other videos to see what numbers are there. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lenses. I'm not going to put a bevel on the front convex surface of the lens because it will not be protruding out of the frame, nor will your... The rear portion of your lens but i'm still going to put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens just because i like to no other reason when you buy your own forty thousand dollar edger you can put whatever bevels on there you want how's that sound you earn the right i'm going to hit the green arrow with the start in every language the door closes the clamp shuts making a squeaky sound and then the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame you can see as it's going around tracing the shape and then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to automatically know where to place the bevel for the best cosmetic look possible, which you're going to... But because I do cut very strong prescriptions all day long, I could move the bevel forwards or backwards depending on how to make the lens fit into the frame better. You're not going to have any edge thickness with your prescription in this frame but the computer is just a, a routine measurement that it always does. So if you see light flickering in the background, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry were plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet, meaning that water is actually spraying onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Water will spray onto this lens for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris that you may be able to see beginning to form on the lens. Yes, I know I need to clean the door. Um, had to be clean, you would see the shape of that lens or the stuff on the edge. But your lenses are made out of polycarbonate, which is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They're virtually unbreakable. These are made also high impact ballistics grade lenses that our soldiers wear to protect their eyes in combat. It also has 100% UVA and UVB protection as well as a premium scratch coating but we know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you have permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the sun, there in Washington, Pennsylvania, this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied. So that is what I mean by cutting wet. Water is spraying onto the lens for the last 20 seconds of the cycle. To wash it off, now you have the Crizal Sapphire. You also have Transitions Extra Active Brown to match the frame. It's also available in a gray and in some prescriptions a green, the new graphite green. But most people like the lens color to match the frame color because this is tortoise frame. This will be an extra active brown lens. But the Crizal Sapphire is the clearest of all the Crizal coatings now. Now technically Crizal Provencia still blocks a little bit more blue light than Crizal Sapphire does. But Provencia has a purplish hue to it that women love, but not all men. And the Crizal Sapphire is a much more masculine color. And of course, I'm a sucker for anything blue. It has a blue to almost clear hue to it. Most other, let me get a paper towel. Also coming soon, I'm going to have a shelf here where all that will be hanging again. I used to have that in the old lab. I'm going to start to reconfigure this lab. So, as I get busier, I need more and more space. I'm going to tuck that lens in at the outside corner and using my thumbs, press down, and it's not going in, so I want to take one-tenth of a millimeter off around the circumference of the lens so that it snaps in there easily. I'm going to take, where's my stylus? 0 0.05, 0 0.10, that is one-tenth of a millimeter. Hit retouch. And it's going to go around until it takes that off until it snaps in there easily. I do not want to force the lens into the frame. It would cause it to stretch or roll. What we in the industry call, if you can imagine the bottom of your frame being like a gutter. If the lens were too large, the external force applied to the frame would cause the bottom of the frame to roll outwards, giving you an ugly cosmetic look, as well as shortening the life of the frame. So I'm going to, I cold mount every lens. Other places that try and crank out jobs fast use heat. 
This is a essentially a $200 hair dryer, but they use heat to heat up your frame to make it more pliable so that the lenses will fit in there. But I do not like to use heat. I do the cold mount as I mentioned. Now that I see there's a little bit of adhesive there that held the demo lenses in, I want to go ahead and let's use this cleaner and clean that inside bevel out to give you the best cosmetic look possible. Here's another tidbit. If your glasses ever get dirty because body oil perspiration will get between the lens and the frame, you can take a glass of water, starting off with warm water, and put a, well before you put any water in there, put a drop of dish detergent such as Dove or palm olive into the glass, then fill it up with warm water. Close your glasses up and drop the frame into the glass of warm soapy water and just let it sit there overnight and it will get into the bevel of the frame to clean that out as well as clean off any other portion of the frame that needs to be done. That's another little tidbit. Dale, I'm throwing everything in your video today. So now let's take the lens out and see if it snaps into the frame easily without causing the frame to stretch. I put it in at the outside corner and the reason why I push down the nose, this is the thickest portion of the frame. So if I'm going to apply any force, it's going to be at the thickest portion. I don't like to push down at the skinniest parts. Having said that, look, the block popped right off. Let me be nice and clean, pick that up. So, okay, everyone keeps getting more. The water that cycles during the machinery comes through here. There's a pump that pumps the water in through these lines. I could adjust how strong or how weak the water flow is and then it flows back in here and this is a filter that catches the the residue from your lens as it's being cut away. So everyone gets to learn a lot. Dale, people are just gonna be amazed at yours. So I like to dry off the block with my hand to get it ready to be reused. My hand is a board approved drying device. And then I take the sticker and I try and figure out a place to connect the dots and grow my little masterpiece. So now that that fits in there, we can go ahead and start cutting the left lens. We're gonna flip this over to L, press that on there well. Let the magnet attach itself to the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby. Hit the green arrow which is start in every language the door closes, the clamp shuts. And then again, the two white styluses are going to trace the shape of the left side of the frame, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's going around tracing the shape. And just like before, it's measuring the thickness of the lens to automatically place the bevel so you have the best cosmetic look possible. And what did I tell you? No edge thickness whatsoever with your prescription in this frame. Beautiful cosmetic look on there. So, we're going to come down here to the lensometer. We're going to put it in above that black dot. Let's darken that so you can see a little bit more at home. That is going to sit directly in front of your pupil and you want to see something cool? Your black dot, my black dot. Look at that. Look at that. So we're going to come down here to the lensometer. We're going to turn it on. I'm going to spin the fine tune knob, the axis wheel to 14. Where are you at? 14. One tick mark away from 15 put it in above that black dot and when I read the power I am getting where's the flashlight plus 50 exactly halfway between 0 and 1 in the black not minus but plus 50 that's why there's two different colors on this wheel your prescription reads plus 50 minus 1 at 0 1 4 14 so you are far-sighted you need two steps of magnification to see far away clearly that is why there's a plus sign now, once everything is the correct size, you have four steps of astigmatism correction. There's a minus sign, so we're gonna, you have one curve on your this eye that is plus 50, you have a second curve that is minus one. This is always in minus cylinder form. Years ago, they used to put the astigmatism correction on the front surface of the lens, and it would be concave on the front, and then they moved it to where now it's now in the back to match the curvature of the frames. When it was ground into the front of the lens, this would be a plus cylinder, but because from plus to back becomes minus. So we're gonna 
minus four steps on that wheel to check your astigmatism correction and we end up at minus 50 exactly halfway between zero and one on the red scale going from black to red and that's because if someone if you had 50 cents and you had to let someone borrow a dollar you'd be 50 cents in the red that's where you're at let me dial that in a little clearer minus 50 in the red now this number 14 a straight line is 0 to 90 to 180 it's how you line up the two curves on your eyes and the right eye is curved to line up those two curves on the 14th meridian your left eye same magnification that you need on the left side but you only need one step of astigmatism correction on the left side and we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 70 and <laughs> I can't get away without saying that. If anyone missed any of that, let me recap. <laughs> Remember, I tell that joke for me, not for y'all. I might just tell it again. If, if, if I don't hear any laughter, I'm going to keep telling that joke until I hear laughter. So I'm going to dry the lens off. Where'd your frame go? Here it is. We're going to tuck the left lens in at the outside corner first, using the thumbs, push down the nose, and then that snaps off. Wait, I got to keep making my artwork and pull the block off, dry it off with my hand again, and then stick that on there. So, dry the lens off. We're gonna come back here to the lensometer. Turn the wheel to 70. Put it in above that dot. And read the power, and again, I'm getting, hey, get out of the way, I'm trying to work here. We're getting plus 50, again, exactly halfway between zero and one in the black, plus 50. We're only going to take away the smallest amount you can, a quarter diopter. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm going from the three skinny lines. Can you guys see any of that in there? And then I twist it just enough, and now no more three skinny lines close together. You have three thicker lines spread apart, and that's how we can read the power and the lens on. But i got to figure out how to attach a camera to that so you guys can see. But when we take one quarter away from plus 50, we end up at plus a quarter one tick mark away from zero so that's cut perfectly now here's another thing the bifocal strength that you have is 150 which tells me you're about roughly about 45 years old give or take a year or two and dale in the comment section if you feel free to tell me what your actual age is um i would love to know 125 is in the lower 40s 150 the mid 40s 175 the upper 40s and then about 50 and up you go to a plus two but the reason why it's called an add, it means in addition to what's up top. So your full strength of the reading, you add 150 to the 50 up here, and you would actually, if you went to the store and bought over-the-counter reading glasses, you would need a plus two because you add these two numbers together. Now for a computer, that's the full strength. That's what's known as the working distance. That's elbows touching your sides, arms bent at a right angle. Two diopters of magnification is what you need to read here. For the computer screen, you need to back it off maybe about two steps, so essentially about a one. Added to that, a pair of 150 reading glasses works here, but you need a plus two right here. Jewelers use a plus ten, but they're looking at the diamond literally right there at the edge of that little loop they put on their eye. So the weaker the number, the far away you can see, the higher the number, the closer you can bring it in. So that's that. Now... The great thing is you have the if you're left eye dominant you could buy a pair of plus two over the counter reading glasses if you were going to be doing reading for a long time but you have the smallest amount of astigmatism correction you can have in your left eye but because you have four steps in the right you still may even though it magnifies the correct amount it just may not make it as crisp as you need it and you still may suffer eye fatigue if you try to read with a pair of over the counter reading glasses on for more than you know 30 minutes to an hour um, it just becomes difficult so the pupillary distance is 68. I'm going to flip the card over. I'm going to place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens. And then we hold it up to the left lens. We're getting 68. Of course, this is very worn. There is no 69. Let me get a new one. Nobody be calling US Optical. But yeah, when we hold it up, we're getting 68 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. Just for fun, let's take this other lens. Black dot to black dot. How about that? They overlap. And I want to check the... OC height of 24 so I place the PD stick again against my thumb on your right lens and we get to the bottom of the lens right before the frame we're getting 24 millimeters so that is perfect 
Let's measure the left. Same thing right before the bottom of the frame, 24 millimeters. So that is cut perfectly. This has sharp edges, so I don't like to use it a lot. These I've rounded off and how? Let's go ahead and get a new one ready, shall we? I come over here to my grinding wheel and I take the corner and I put it against the side. Ooh, that was cool. And I round off those corners just enough and I'm gonna do it on this end as well. This is about the most, most of a tutorial I've ever done in a video. I should at least play some music while I'm doing that. A little grinding music, <laughs> whatever that is. Is grunge grinding music. Smooth that out and now we will soon have a replacement PD stick for, let's go ahead and put the old one up. We'll put it in the back, put the new one here. So, now this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lenses very carefully with a more harsh chemical and I make sure not to get it near the frame. But when you get these in the mail and of course free shipping anywhere in the US, but when you get these in the mail, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight, too loose or too tight. Um, but there's a higher chance, higher probability that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And I'm not immune from that. I'm in that 80% club myself. So if you get these and they're a little high, just stop by your local optical shop or your doctor's office where you got your glasses from and just tell them if it's too loose or too tight or high on one side. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. Did I mention that 99% of all optical shops do free adjustments? It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses properly, but standard alignment, I put it on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%, so I have one ear that's higher than the other. Put mine back on, and for those of you keeping the score at home, again, today I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfair, which are sunglasses that I took the dark lenses out of and put in my clear lenses. Now, here's another good example. Here is, I have Transition Signature 7 with Crizal Sapphire lenses. Dale has Transition's Extra Active Brown with Crizal Sapphire. And when I turn my lenses over, you can see here's a clear lens. So technically there's about a 3 to 5% hue with Transition Signature 7. These actually look a little bit lighter. They're supposed to be about five to seven percent hue while indoors not as clear as that but transitions extra active have come a long way it is a great lens now it does cost more because it does more and i'll explain that in just a moment but that is the difference between the lenses again let me put mine back on so you can see what i'm doing but flip it over press down there is no wobble close each temple and make sure they overlap perfectly and that neither are askew from shipping or what have you um, let me go ahead and clean these really, really well. And of course, not only do I provide instructions on the care for your frame and your lenses, they will last for years, but you have a Persol cleaning cloth that was included in here in a matching brown. How cool is that to match your lenses? Persol. And I'm going to include mine and instructions not only on how to care for your frame and lenses, but for your cleaning cloth and your case. I give instructions with every shipment on how to do that. So those two will last you for years. And I field test every cleaning cloth. I always use yours. This is the one you'll be receiving. So when you get these in the mail and there's a wrinkle, you know that this works. You can't say that you can't clean your glasses. Besides, I like using yours because I'm too cheap to reach in my pocket and grab mine out of my pocket. So, but this is what your lenses look like the first time around with the Crizal Sapphire coating. I'm going to go ahead and activate them in my Transitions Extra, my Transitions box, which just has led lights in the top of it but i'm exposed them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light and as you can see it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for a transition lenses to darken it takes a little bit longer when you come back inside 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to return back to clear now this is important dale pay attention all transition lenses will get dark on day one give them two weeks of exposure and they're going to continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks now, the only time transition signature 7 lenses like I have will not work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack. Now, transitions extra active that you're getting will turn about 30 to 50% in a car while mine do nothing. It's about time for me to upgrade, I think. Um, 
after seeing so many of those I think I do want to now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle they will darken and the other thing about transition lenses they're temperature sensitive meaning they'll get darker when it's 80 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above but I remind everyone that when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside again having said that transitions extra active will get darker in hotter weather than my lenses will the signature seven it is the term extra active means it's designed for extra active people who spend a lot of time outdoors originally the first people to get these were like surveyors or people who work for the department of transportation on the roads any or landscapers anyone who worked outside now just about everybody gets it so and if i were to continue talking for a minute you can see how these are lightening up and then will turn back to clear and we'll just see about that because if you like what you've seen so far, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram as FreePrescriptionLenses.com. On Twitter, I am at FreeRxLenses because my username is too long for Twitter. But Dale in Washington, Pennsylvania, I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription trend, the Poly Ideal Advanced Invisible Digital Freeform Progressive Lenses with Transitions Extra Active Brown and Crizal Sapphire. For your Persol, where's my flashlight? Your Persol 20, I'm sorry, 3059 in color 24 in the 50i size. I believe they call this the typewriter edition. Again, I'm not an authorized Persol dealer, so I do not know. Look how quickly that's turning back to virtually clear. But one thing I do want to say about Crizal Sapphire, it is the newest coating from them. It is their flagship anti-glare for years all the Crizals from Crizal Easy, Crizal Alize, Crizal Avance have a greenish purple hue. Then came out with the blue blocking lens of Crizal Provencia, which has a purplish hue. The green went away and it was just truly purple. Crizal Sapphire is blue to virtually clear. It is the clearest of all the Crizal coatings. Now, because it's new technology, the machine that applies that, which costs several million dollars and takes over 24 hours to vaporize, eight different coatings onto your lens. So because of the time and the expense, they put the industry's hardest scratch coating on top of your lens to protect your time and investment. But because every state has major labs that can apply Crizal, all the previous ones, including Provencia, fairly quickly, Crizal Sapphire, I'm asking people to give me up to two weeks because now this one has only been eight days which is nice, but someone else's may, it just depends on how many they're running through. They take the lenses literally and they put them in something that looks like a tortoise shell. There's clips that holds them in and it spins very fast inside of a chamber. And then these gases spray onto the lens and vaporize onto the, onto the lens. And so the machine that does that, they're installing them into the major labs, but they can't do it fast enough. And so that's why Crizal Sapphire takes a little bit longer because of the backlog of lenses waiting to get in there. So look at that, how it's returning back to virtually clear. We're getting there. Look at that. Look at that. And the time has taken me to explain that. I think it's time for me to order some extra active lenses myself. But again, I hope you enjoyed watching. Um, feel free to leave a comment. Dale, tell me your age in the comment section below if you're so brave as to do so. Anyone else, feel free to leave a comment. And hopefully everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.